welcome here today we're going to be doing a video on home dyeing some linen clothing i'll be showing you how i did the dress i'm wearing um it's a not perfect linen i cannot remember the name of the style it's a not perfect linen dress has pockets i got it secondhand on a buy sell trade and it had been over dyed by i believe the original purchaser and it was blotchy i'll show you before videos but it was a mess so i was able to strip the color out and re-dye it and i am really happy with the results before i did that i did this it's a j jill linen dress it was the one i wanted to practice on before i did this one because i didn't want to mess up the good one <laughs> so the j jill dress is one that i had thrifted and I really love the fit of it and the feel. It's really lightweight, soft linen, and I just didn't want to wear it as often as I would have liked because it was a really light icy blue color and like icy sky blue and that's that's not my kind of color. Light sage color and that's much more up my alley. So I will be sharing all of that with you guys today. Here is the before you can see the not perfect linen dress was previously dyed. It's blotchy right around the chest and kind of a mess. It started originally as a beige color and the previous owner had tried to over dye the beige color with this kind of indigo denim colored blue and it just didn't work out very well. So... Good for me, I managed to get a bargain, but I'm fortunate for her. So hopefully I can restore this to some of its former glory. First step is just to get the garment nice and soaking wet. You can see the blue dye dripping out of it as it gets wet in my shower. And that to me is a really good indication of a poor dye job. And she most likely didn't do any sort of dye fixative or color locker. So we will definitely be doing that today. My goal with this was to do a chimney brick kind of mauvey red brown color, but as I'll show you that didn't quite go to plan. First step is to get boiling hot water, then you want to get it more towards like the simmering not quite boiling and add your packet of dye remover and give it a good stir make sure it's fully dissolved it's important to note you don't want to reuse these utensils and pots for food once you have used them for your dyeing projects it's not considered safe Take your saturated wet garment and add it into the pot of the color remover. You can see the colors already just leaching out of it. It's quite satisfying. And you want to keep it moving for, I believe, 20 minutes. Now you can see it's already done a lot of work on that blue dye. After your 20 minutes are up, you want to drain and rinse. I like to keep cold water running in the sink so it kind of tempers the really hot water that I'm pouring down the drain. And here is where the oddity of this project occurred. Pretty much as soon as this garment was removed from the color remover and hit the air it started to immediately turn back to a blue color you can see it happening here already and i did put it back in color remover solution twice and this happened every time it did get a bit lighter each time i don't know 
what type of dye the previous owner used, if it's just something that I will never be able to get rid of. So I quickly deduced that this wasn't going to work the way I wanted it to. I did not think that I'd be able to get the color I wanted of the kind of like mauve -y, pink brown color over top of this remaining blue dye. So I switched gears and decided on a charcoal gray dye instead. Next, you want to fully wash the garment in warm water and laundry detergent. You can either throw it in your washing machine for a quick cycle or hand wash it like I chose to. I just didn't have the patience to wait for a full laundry cycle when I knew I could hand wash it in less than 10 minutes. And you need to fill your pot back up with water after you've rinsed all the soap out. And you'll get that water heating back up for the dyeing process while you work on rinsing all the soap out of your garment. It's a surprisingly effective forearm and bicep exercise I discovered through this process. Just making sure that all the soap is removed as best as possible. You don't have to be too perfect because you will put a tablespoon, I'm sorry, a teaspoon of soap in the dye solution, but I just didn't want to add any extra if I could help it. I just can't believe that the dress returned this color after it had been completely beige in the color remover solution. You add a cup of salt, a cup of vinegar, your soap, and you want to stir until the salts dissolved as best as possible. And here is where you want to add your dye. Typically you do about half a bottle. I'm using the RIT all-purpose dye in the color charcoal gray. Just doing a dip dye color test. And then in goes the garment. Crossing our fingers at this point that it turns out to be somewhat nice. At this point, I was really apprehensive and not at all sure what I was going to wind up with. This was only my second time dyeing a garment. The first time was that J. Jill dress that I showed you at the beginning of this video. I'll show you that at the end of this video too. But that turned out really well and was honestly quite easy. It had stripped down to a nice white other than the seams where it held on to a little bit of the light blue and of course the threads. Because in more commercially produced linen products, they're typically made with a polyester thread and Polyester isn't going to color strip or dye very easily at all. If you are trying to do anything that is a primarily a polyester garment, you are going to need a synthetic dye. And I am using all purpose made for more like of cottons and linens. So after the time soaking in the dye and you've kept it stirring and your time is up, it's time to rinse out the dye. I try to rinse until I get a lot of the heavy color leaching out and then you wash it again. And this time after you wash it, it will go in the color fixative. This just helps to lock in the dye and prevent it from bleeding and just help it from fading really easily and help it to last a really long time. This is a really important, often overlooked step in home dyeing. There is the RIT Color Stay Dye Fixative that I used. This you can get at some Walmarts, but definitely at like your project stores like Joanne, Michaels, maybe Hobby Lobby. I really don't know. And in goes the garment again. Now this is a quicker process. It only takes 20 minutes in here to keeping it to continuously moving. 
my pot's a little smaller than I would like for this kind of project. So I just kind of pick it up a few times and make sure I'm laying it back down in a different position to kind of try to get every spot of this fabric that I can. And once your 20 minutes in the color stay dye fixative are up, you'll just rinse it and hang it to dry. This is the J drill dress that I practiced on. And this is the not perfect linen dress that I showed you throughout the process of this video. Overall, I'm really happy with how the color came out. It's really quite even. It's not the exact color I wanted, but I still loved it. And I can't wait to wear it all the time. And that is all for me today, guys. I had a lot of fun making this video and learning a new skill. Um, it's really fun to learn new things and be able to make your clothing more your own or buy rescue projects for cheap and have a dream piece that's all yours. And it's just really fun. So I'm glad that you guys we're here today and thank you so much for watching. If you enjoyed the video at all, a like is the best compliment you can give me and I really appreciate every like, comment, and subscribe. Have a great day.